Now, China's top diplomat has warned that any steps towards Taiwan's independence will be severely punished. It follows the election of William Lai as the island's new president. He's viewed by Beijing as a dangerous separatist. Speaking during a visit to Egypt, China's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Wang Yi, had this to say. Taiwan's election is a regional affair within China. No matter what the results of the election are, they cannot change the basic fact that there is only one China and Taiwan is a part of it. Taiwan has never been a country. It wasn't in the past and it certainly won't be in the future. Meanwhile, China has accused the U.S. of sending a gravely wrong signal to those pushing for Taiwan's independence. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken congratulated President-elect William Lai on Saturday. That message was seen by Beijing as a violation of Washington's commitment to maintain only unofficial ties with Taiwan. For the very latest, let's take you live to Taipei and the BBC's Steve Lai. Steve, good to see you. What's the mood in Taipei this morning? Yeah, so those words of congratulations uh, from Anthony Blinken have been backed up uh, with some actions as well. Just yesterday, a delegation of a U.S. C former senior officials arrived in Taipei, and they're expected to meet uh, with uh, various uh, leaders here today. We'll have to wait and see uh, what comes out of those meetings and what words uh, get shared between the two of those parties. In the meantime, uh, let's get more sort of reaction to what we've seen over the weekend's elections uh, with Sharu Shirley Lynch. He's a research professor at the University of Virginia. Shirley, thanks for your time today. Uh, firstly, these election results show that Taiwan will actually have a weaker parliament uh, and a weaker par for the next four years, given the split of how the parties have sort of divided up the parliamentary seats. Uh, what do you make of that, and uh, particularly now that TPP looks like they could hold some leverage in parliament? Yeah, I think, uh, Steve, the election was uh, very much as expected in terms of the presidential uh, election. But what was surprising was the parliament. Uh, for the parliament, I think it's pretty clear the Taiwanese people had a different idea of uh, the leaders and what party they support. There was a split in the sense that people voted for one presidential candidate but didn't vote for their party in the case of both DPP and KMT. The biggest winner was the Taiwan uh, People's Party, which won eight seats, whereas the KMT and uh, DPP each had 52 and 51 seats respectively. It seems strange to say that uh, with eight seats, they're the big winners in this election. So what sway will they have? Well, uh, with uh, basically um, a 51 seat for the DPP, the president really can't count on his party uh, to pass uh, bills, which requires 57 seats, a majority. What this really means is that um, both sides could work with the smaller party, the DPP, run by the for former mayor of Taipei, Ke Wenzhe, and he may have a deciding vote on everything from defense bill. Uh, to domestic reforms on housing, energy policy. Uh, but very importantly, this means foreign policy uh, will take some time actually uh, to make decisions on. Yeah, it seems like it could complicate things somewhat. So how will Washington and Beijing be able to interact with this new parliament, with, with this new government? Well, as you said, uh, Jim um, Hadley and... Uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, Stephen Halley and Jim Steinberg are already here in Taipei. So I think the reassurance that the um, uh, United States wants to give Taipei and Beijing at the same time is already underway. I think Beijing will probably wait until um, uh, the uh, U.S. presidential election uh, to step up um, the heat of you to, in, to intensify the pressure. But the pressure has been on, and I uh, predict it will be quite stable. But this new government, which uh, the new parliament will start February 1, the president is inaugurated on May 20th and I think for some time actually um, consensus will take a lot more time to build so the US um, and China will have to expect a lot more delay in anything that is uh, uh, to um, uh, that actually divides the people which are most issues and you mentioned that the US election Beijing often takes a long-term view when it comes uh, to its relationships with countries uh, how will the US election depending on which way it goes in November have a bearing on the China-Taiwan-U.S. dynamic. So, of course, Beijing would like to see a more, um, a firmer U.S. government that sticks to the one China policy. And uh, um, while you're thinking about uh, strategic ambiguity, China would like the U.S. to be firmer about stopping uh, Taiwan from being too um, 
proactive uh, on, uh, uh, on safeguarding autonomy. And to be honest, if you look at this election, one big lesson, Steve, of this lesson, of this election, is that Taiwanese people are moving the political parties more towards the center. Um, the KMT tried to stay away from talking about China. The DPP tried to stay away from talking about um, identity. Uh, and, and the TPP says, we're good for everything. So what you can see is everyone is trying to say, uh, we are less extreme than you think. Um, and we're not pro-China or we're not pro-US. Um, and I think everyone has also um, affirmed uh, Taiwan's uh, international relations um, or foreign policy direction, which is Taiwan needs to connect with the world and needs a better relationship with China. And for that, everyone split their votes so that the government won't move forward much. So with that moderation to the middle, the separation of votes, which could slow down things in parliament, that almost helps guide Taiwan towards the status quo or how things have been. So are you optimistic uh, for Taiwan's future going forward the next few years, that relationships with both sides could, by default of stagnation or stalemate in, in parliament, actually help Taiwan's relationships with the two part two with the US and I China? I think, Steve, you're very optimistic. I would like to agree <laughs> with that, and I partly do, because I think when things don't move so quickly, it actually is, uh, uh, it, there's a possibility to try to learn how to create consensus. What's really difficult is in this stalemate, you can't solve the real problem. And this time, while China is front and center at every national election, what's really important is 30% of the voters under 40, they wanted a third way. And they gave, a lot of them gave their votes to the TPP to focus on domestic policy. They want to have affordable housing, better energy mix towards net zero, um, and uh, uh, um, reduce inequality. For all of these things that need real policy, uh, we actually need a more efficient parliament. So for this reason, um, the election means we'll have a more divided people. And uh, uh, I think also Beijing contributes to that dividedness. And in some ways, uh, so does the United States.